super quick demo. Um, actually, a quick show of hands here. Who here has not ever created a workflow? Okay. I see a couple of hands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this, you know, the, the, the level 100 where I just create a very simple workflow. I'll just show you what a very simple workflow looks like. This is what it looks like. It's point and click, um, and anybody can use it. You can click add tasks. You can add notebooks, Python scripts, wheels, you know, DBT projects, Delta Live tables. So uh, please, please go and try it out. Uh, it's uh, accessible under the workflows tab. But what I'd like to do now is actually show you something that is a bit more exciting than um, a demo workflow. What I'd like to show you is something um, which is more real world. So for this, I'm actually going to pretend, and I'm going to maybe zoom in a little bit over here. Um, OK, let's do this. OK. So what I'm going to pretend here, you know, bear with me for a moment. This is all just you know, uh, made up. But the idea here is that I'm the owner of a vinyl store. Uh, records. Uh, maybe there are people here who don't know what they are, uh, but they're records. And I'm in the business of taking deliveries of these records, these uh, vinyl records, and then selling them on my website. Okay. And what happens is that every day I get a data file, and then I ingest that data file. What I want to do is I really want to make sure that I find, I do two things. One, I find the really interesting records, and then I actually want to use LLMs to enhance the data that I'm getting. Okay, so it's ingestion, some processing, and then I'm actually going to build a dashboard out of this uh, to show you. Uh, it, it will all make sense in a moment. Okay, so the first thing to realize is that workflows can start very simple and they can get very complicated. And the first task of this workflow, what we call a task, um, is simply a notebook. And that's actually the most common way to build workflows. A lot of our customers, a lot of you are using notebooks inside of workflows. Um, and what I'm going to show you this real quick. Uh, what this notebook is doing is this is live, and there's a little dog in the corner. This is our dog fooding environment. Um, so what this what this notebook is doing is simply is simply reading a CSV file and it's ingesting it. Okay, nothing too exciting. Um, and then what's happening is once this notebook is done executing, we're doing something called we're calling it scan for valuable disks. And let's go actually take a look at what that does. It's live. OK. Um, and over here, what I'm doing is I'm just running some SQL, some really, really basic SQL. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm just deleting records that are older than 1995. Because of course, like no good music was made after 1995. OK? Um, and then I have this really interesting thing. And you may not have seen this before. This is what we call a conditional task. And a conditional task, what it lets you do is it lets you branch. And it lets you branch based on logic. And we've, we've gone to lengths to make sure that this is very, very simple to use. We wanted to make sure that we're not giving you the super complex DSL. You don't have to write Python for this. Um, so you choose the task type. It's called the if-else condition. And there's an expression. So when AI underscore enabled is not equal to no, then you take one path and then you take another path. Okay, so this should look very familiar. It's a classic if-then. And what we're doing here is that in one path, we're actually, and if you zoom in over here a little bit, what we're doing is we're calling another job that is defined elsewhere. And this is what we call a child job. Uh, and then if you come here, if you look at this over here, it says run job. So if you're not using this, this is super powerful. It lets you kind of split up your code, lets you split up your workflow. Um, and this is just a normal job, but we're going to spin it up and we're going to run it. If the parent job were, fails, or if the child job fails, you get full repair and rerun functionality. So if anything fails, levels down, you can always just observe it and you can fix it if you want. Um, and let's take a look at this. I'm going to open this up real quick over here. And what this child job is doing is super interesting. And this will show you some of the nature of the lake house and how we're integrating with it. And this, this task in here is very interesting. This is what we call a SQL task. And I had talked about this a little bit earlier, but this is really saying, here's some SQL, run it. And in this case, just run it on serverless compute. Spin it up super fast, run my query, shut it down when you're done. Don't waste any money, OK? Um, so if you're not using the SQL, SQL task, you should really check it out. And if you look at the query here, this is kind of cool. What it's doing is uh, we're actually 
we're creating a, a, a function, we're creating a user-defined function in SQL, which is calling out to Azure OpenAI. So it's calling out to the uh, OpenAI uh, service in Azure, and it actually calls the GPT-3.5 Turbo model, and it passes it a secret from our secret store, and I'll show you what it does. So it passes in the name of the band, and then it gets back a description. And this is just pure SQL. It's very easy to do. And then it runs an update statement, OK? Um, and then you can see this over here. Because this is a workflow scheduler, we're both doing some checks on the descriptions. We're making sure there are no, no naughty words in there. And then we're updating a dashboard, OK? So again, this is, this, this is the nature of integrating with the lake house. You don't have to have extra infrastructure. You don't have to set, do timing to update the dashboard. You can just tell workflows, hey, when you're done with all this, I want you to go update the dashboard. And of course, you get full visibility. You get full observability. Okay? So we see that this has been running for a long time. It has been running successfully. I can quickly look at it and see where time is being spent. I can look at each task and see how much time it's taking. And I can even see here that there was, a, there was a cancellation, there was a, there was a problem here, and I can take some action. And just to show you that this actually works, uh, let me actually go to the dashboard real quick and see what we've been doing. And this will open up over here in a moment. Okay, and this is what I'm, so just to show you what we're up to, we actually loaded a lot more than 12 artists from the injection file. Remember, we dropped any artist after 1995 because their music sucks. Uh, and then what we did was we passed in the artist name and the record name to uh, OpenAI, and this it gave us this description, uh, machine gener or AI generated, which we ingested back. Okay, and all of this I was able to do with just a few clicks. Right, this isn't a lot of code. This is you know a, a uh, Spark call to read a data frame, a CSV, and then another SQL call to call out to um, OpenAI. But then what I do get is full visibility into everything that's going on and an orchestrator that truly integrates with the lake house. So we're almost done. I actually